Let's look at the concept of dot product. And for this particular lesson, I want you to think about this as just an operation you're going to learn. We're gonna see the application of this in statics in the following, uh, in the following module. So the dot product uh, has two main uses. One of them is to find the angle between two lines, and that's particularly helpful when you have something in three dimensions. And the second use is to be able to find the projection of a vector along a particular direction. And that's gonna be useful when we're looking at particle equilibrium or rigid body equilibrium. So again, the topic for this video is dot product. And by definition, right, by definition, um, uh, the idea of dot product is as following. Let's say that we have a vector A, and that vector A is written in Cartesian vector form, and that, let's say that that is then AXI plus AYJ plus AZK. And that, uh, this, um, uh, and these values, remember these, va these values of AX, AY, and AZ are scalar vectors, and these I, J, and K are my unit vectors showing the direction in, in, uh, in the X, Y, and Z axis. So that we have another vector, that vector is B, so that will be B, X, I, as B, Y, J, as B, Z, K. Uh, same thing, this B, X, B, Y, and B, Z, they're gonna be uh, just numbers, uh, real numbers, and then the I, J, and K are my unit vectors. All right, so by definition, uh, when we're gonna do the dot product, and by, and by looking at um, that definition, it's gonna be equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of theta. So this is the definition of the product. And to be able to show that the product, we're gonna use this dot to show that the product, okay? All right, so let's look at some of, this correct, of the characteristics of the dot product. First of all, A and B, those magnitudes are gonna be scalars and the cosine of theta is gonna be scalar as well. So one of the things that we see immediately is that the dot product is not a vector, it's a scalar quantity. Scalar quantity, right? And the units of that dot product, let's see, this is going to be units of whatever that vector is. So, if it, so we're looking about force that will be, let's say, pounds. B is also pounds. And this cosine has the unit, so it will be pound square. If we're talking about position vectors, that's going to be, uh, let's say, uh, feet or meters. So it's going to be feet square or meters square. So that's what's going to happen with the units. But the important, one of the important things is this idea that the dot product is a scalar, right? All right, so let me put it here. This is by definition. Right, somebody defined this as a dot product. Okay, now, one of the things that is interesting about this dot product is that there is another way to calculate that dot product if the vectors are expressed in Cartesian vector form. So we're gonna have two equations that we can work with to calculate that dot product. That second equation, so we can say that the, the dot product can be calculated as following, right? So we're gonna have the, the A dot B, by the way, it's important to use this dot because later on we're going to see another type of uh, product which is called cross product. So it's important to use this dot to indicate uh, that product. So A dot B, there's another other way to calculate it, which is to take AX 
times bx plus ay times by plus az times bz. So that's another way to do it. So whatever you calculate from this equation will give you exactly the same value that you can calculate using the equation over here. So both of them are going to be exactly the same. Those values, this, this a dot b, and this a dot b are going to be exactly the same. So how can we use this? Well, the in terms of the uses, the idea is the following. So we can use it to calculate or um, to calculate angles uh, between two between two lines or between two cables or between two forces, right? And to be able to do that, what I can do is to first use a dot b equal to ax bx plus ay by by az bz, right? So first use that equation and then and then I can solve for theta from this the, the definition of the dot product. So from magnitude of A magnitude of B cosine of theta. So co conceptually that's the way that we can find the angle between two between two lines. Now the other use is to see what is the um, the the amount of force in a particular direction. That's in particular uh, for statics. But if you want to project, they would like the way that I like to think about it is to project a vector in a direction. That can also be done with a dot product. Now for that we need a the help of a unit uh, a unit vector describing that direction. So let let me explain that. So for the second use, which is to uh, let's say to calculate force in a particular direction. And again, this is within the concept of, of statics. If you can, uh, you can, this can be, um, this definition can be much wider in terms of just a, um, the uh, um, projection of a vector in a particular direction. So let, let's say, thinking about forces, let's say that we have this force F, it's a vector. And let's say that I am interested in knowing um, how much of that force is going to be in a direction. So let's say that I have this, this line. I mean, interested in knowing how much is in this direction for some reason. And we're gonna see some of those uses later when we talk about particle equilibrium. So to know how much is in that direction, what I need to do is I need to take a perpendicular uh, line over here and then calculate calculate how much is this value right this value over here so that's f um, let's call this but this f prime is going to be the uh, projection of f along this line that we have right here right? the projection Okay, to be able to do that, again, we need a help of a unit vector. So I'm gonna define a unit vector somewhere in here. Let's call this unit vector u. And that calculation of that f prime, right? That f prime, the magnitude of that f prime, because magnitude of that f prime is going to be equal to f dot u. 
not do that. Okay? F w. Now it's gonna be only the magnitude. Remember that this dot product gives you a scalar, a scalar quantity, so this is gonna be only the magnitude. If you want to find the whole vector f prime, if you want to find the whole vector f prime, then what we need to do is to take that f prime is going to be the magnitude of f prime, which we calculated in the previous line, times something that goes in the direction of f prime, and we already have that, right? This unit vector you had goes in that direction. So, oh, by the way, this should be, um, u hat so times u hat. So this is the magnitude of that, and this is the actual vector with magnitude and direction. So that's an overview of the dot product and the main uses that we're going to have in statics. Uh, some of the other characteristics that we can describe about the dot product is that the order of the um, of the vectors do not uh, affect the results so uh, when i have a dot b that's going to be the same value than b dot a we're going to see later on that that's not the case for the cross product but for the dot product that is the case you can switch those those values around 